Python is a high-level programming language. What this simply means is that the code you write can closely resemble the English language, which enhances readability. Along with the core functionality, Python supports using modules and packages, which means we can import specific functionality when we need it. You may have heard the phrase object-oriented programming before. Well, Python is an object-oriented language. If you don't know what this means, don't worry, it's not particularly important, just keep it in the back of your mind. In these workshops, we're going to be working with Python 3. For a beginner, the most noticeable differences between Python 2 and 3 are some syntax changes. That is, the, the exact structure of the commands is slightly different between versions, but that's the, that's the most noticeable anyhow. Coming over onto our desktop environment, we can run Python by going to the Applications menu, going to Programming, and then going down to Python 3. This brings up the Python shell, or IDLE. And this is where we can kind of road test commands live. So let's give that a go. Let's create a variable. We'll just call, we'll just call a variable A, and we'll set it equal to 10. So we can, we can recall A by just typing A, and that shows us the variable and the variable type and what it is. So in this case, we have an integer, which is 10. We can do things like a equals a times a. And if we call a again, we have 100. We can even create strings. So we can say string is equal to some string. And I'm going to be particularly boring and choose hello world once again. Uh, let's have a look at what happens when we invoke string again. So we can see string which has hello world with some quote marks. Now we can print text to the screen with the print command and we can print some text and that comes up uh, just as one might expect. We can also print the variable string so we can print string without quotation marks and we can see hello world is there. So when we printed string, it returned the variable type and what it is. That is, it's showing us that it's a, ver that it's a string by giving us these quote marks and then it's showing us the, the contents of that variable. Whereas here, print is for outputting information. So it, it drops the quote marks because it's printing just the contents of that string. Now, in the supplementary material for this course, we have a script for this section. I've already, in my file system, created a directory for chapter two, and inside that I've already copied that script. So what you might need to do is go to File, New File, and then you can type that script out into this window and save it. Make sure you save with a .py for Python extension. So I'm gonna open that script, and we're just gonna have a, a quick walkthrough of a lot of the functions in there. I've tried to cram as much as I can into this example, so it's quite heavy on just the little tricks and um, nuances that Python may have. Let's give this a run. I'll just, I'll just restart the shell. That's useful just to clear it. No, that hasn't worked. Uh, never mind. I'll just go down here so I've got a clean screen. And we can run the script with run, run module, or we can strike F5. And let's have a look at what comes out. Let's have a new shell anyway, no worries. So what we have is a print and a string. That, that's come up just as we might expect. We can use hash for comments. This is to, create, this is to increase the readability of our code. By, in, by putting in comments, we can, we can leave messages for ourselves or other programmers about what the code is doing in a more human readable form. So we create two string variables called hello and world. And in the next statement, we can see that we're printing string one plus a space plus string two. So we've got hello, a space, and then world. And then we're printing the string, just the exclamation point, times three, and we can see that that's multiplied that string, or repeated it rather, three times. So this is um, this is called string concatenation when we when we stick two things together, and we're also repeating with that uh, multiplication symbol asterisk. We can create a variable called two on three, which is just equal to two thirds, 
And in the next couple of lines, we're printing some variables in our print statement. So we can say two divided by three is about, and then these two uh, curly braces, they're, they're what allow us to insert information into that print statement. And we do that with the dot .format argument here. And in dot .format, we're just using the variable 213. So what that means is 213 will be substituted for, the, for these closed braces. The same thing happens on the next line, except within the braces, we can include formatting information. In this case, we're formatting the output as a float. So rather than punching out as much information as, the, as Python can about the variable 2 on 3, the default format for float appears to be about six decimal places, and that's the difference between those two commands. Next up, we have an import statement. So this is what I was talking about before, where we can import functionality. In this case, we're importing a mathematics toolbox, essentially. Math has a bunch of routines and constants for us to use, which are going to be helpful later on. Usually, we put imports at the top of the script. That's by convention, because that, that's, you know, if they if you put the import at the top of the script, you'll never have commands above that import statement that rely upon it. So we, we usually put them at the top. I've just put it here to highlight where it's being used. So we're creating a string called more, and in this very large print statement, which I'm going to which I'm going to draw out so we can read fully, we've got one, two, three variables being displayed. And by including a number or an index inside these braces, we can explicitly pick and choose which variables we're pulling out of our format argument. So if you swap the indexes, you'll swap which, which, um, which variable you draw from. So here we can see the output is you can print more than one variable. Here's pi. That makes three variables. And the code for that has the string more. For, for the zeroth uh, variable, then pi for the first. And here is where our math toolbox came in handy. We have math.py. So here we're invoking the pi constant from the math package. And that's done by using this dot. So math is an object, and we can access parts of that object with that dot. And then the last variable is just the number three. We can throw in a blank line in our output. That's this, there's a bit more space here. And that is with the backslash n character, which is a special escape sequence to just do a new line. That's like a line feed. Now we're going to do some looping. So this is going to be a for loop. And we're going to say for some variable num in range 2 to 10, incrementing by 2. So just to reiterate, we're going to make up some variable called num, and we're going to allow it to take on the val values in the range 2 to 10, but we're going to increment it by 2 each time. So that is, <laughs> that's, that's quite, quite, a, um, quite a lot to handle, but when we come down into the next line, we can see that we're indented with white space. Python uses white space for code structure. So you need to make sure that that indent is there. If you didn't have the indent there, you would have an empty for loop. It also mean, it also kind of forces you to keep your code looking good because if it looks good, it'll run well. So inside this for loop, the only line that we have is to print num and you can see that we get two, four, six, eight. We don't get 10 because as the loop increments from 8 to 10, it's reached the end of its range, and it, uh, it meets the condition that it is now outside the loop. So it doesn't execute for 10. We print another blank line, and then we create an array. So an array is just a list. It doesn't necessarily have to be of numbers. It could be of other things. You could even have an array of strings. But in this case, we have an array of uh, numbers. So we have numbers incrementing from 1 to 7 and then decrementing down to 1. That's, well, I'll come back to why that was 15 in a moment. We're going to use this, this array in the following loop. So this is a, a different loop. 
this is a different style of, of invoking a loop. Here we still have a for loop and we're going to say for element in A. So A is an array and an array has items in it or, or uh, elements. So this is saying for every thing in A, run some code and then increment to the next one. Now within this for loop, we, we come in and we indent and then we, we come straight up against an if statement. So this is what we're going to use to, to branch our logic, to make decisions. And here we say, if the current element we're looking at is equal to the maximum value in that array. In this case, it's going to be seven. So that's essentially like saying, if element equals seven, then we do some stuff. Otherwise, we're just going to print element and we're going, to we're going to use element to repeat this simple string, which is just an equal sign. So you might have already seen over here, we have these equal signs counting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And in fact, I ran the old code, so I'll run that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we reach the largest element, which is the seventh. So that's where this if statement is true. We print, we print another set of those equal signs, a message, and then we leave the if statement and we print that set of equal signs again. And that creates a nice you know, symmetric visual effect. Um, I, I encourage you to play with this script and just you know, turn the knobs on it and see how the output changes. One thing that I intended to show you is what happens if we make one of these elements much larger and also not in the middle. So if I make that 15 again and run the script, we can see that it is not symmetrical and now the largest, the, the flag that's telling us we reached the largest element is more towards the bottom. So we kind of go up, come down and then go up again. And that's exactly what's happening in this array. So that just about wraps up the basics, some very, very basic um, commands in Python. These, these are gonna be the building blocks that we create larger, larger projects with. And we're going to start using exactly this kind of code in the next section to start driving some hardware.